Set up the board with the coloured Matapool card stacked in the four corners. The wormhole card is placed in the centre with the other game cards face down in rows to form a 7x7 card grid which becomes the game board. Players start on the wormhole card and place their player marker card there. Both wormhole and Matapool cards can be moved through but can't have other game cards played onto them. These are discarded to the box instead when played. We'll look at the different game cards in a moment. In the competitive game, the aim is to collect three different colours of Matapool cards from the corners of the board and return to the wormhole in the centre. Once set up, each player takes it in turns to move one space towards one of the Matapool cards, moving in a straight line. You can't move diagonally. Each of the game cards and any void spaces left by cards being removed from play are each one square of the board. If a square contains a game card when you move onto it, then you must pick it up. Keep it in your hand and don't show it to the other players. You can only hold a maximum of two cards in your hand, so if a third card is picked up from the board, then one of the three cards must be placed face down into the square left by you moving. If you can't place a card, then it is discarded to the box. You'll notice that collecting cards will create void spaces in the board, in the competitive game, these spaces are still part of the board and can be moved onto, but it will take two turns to cross them instead of the usual one. You can use the reverse of your player marker card to show progress by flipping it over and then back again. If a void card is picked up, this should be immediately discarded to the box, creating a void space in the board on the next turn as a player moves. Dark and light cards are placed onto a face down game card to slow a player's movement. They cannot be placed onto any other card or stacked on top of one another. Players cannot pick up the game card beneath a dark or light card. To remove a dark or light card, a player can play the opposite card onto it. Both cards are then discarded to the box. When a dark or light card is played, and then a player moves onto a face down game card, a void space will also be created. Movement cards come in three types to help players to move further or overcome obstacles. These are boosts, warps and matter bridges. A boost card allows a player to move an extra square before picking up a card, if one is available. It also allows a player to cross a void space and light or dark card in one turn instead of the usual two. A warp card allows a player to move in a straight line until stopped. This can be by meeting a dark or light card, void space or the edge of the board. Both boost and warp cards are placed face down into the space left by a player's movement once played. Matter bridge cards allow a player to move across a void space to any one of the other sides. The card should be placed face down in the gap that is being crossed. Cards in your hand must be played at the beginning of your turn before you move. As soon as a movement card is used, further cards cannot be played. So for example, if a player holds a light and a dark card, then both of these could be played before a player moves their usual one space. But if a light and a boost card were held, then the light card would need to be played first before the boost, as the boost is a movement card. So here's an example of the first few turns of a game. The blue player starts, followed by each of the players in a clockwise order. Each player picks up a face down game card as they move on to that square and holds this in their hand. On their second moves, you can see the players opening up void spaces in the board. A void card picked up by the yellow player is immediately discarded. The green player plays a boost card to move an extra square. Some of the players' hands are now full, with the maximum of two cards being held. On the third turn, the blue player plays a light to block access to the red matter pool cards in the corner. Seeing that both green and red players are in that quarter of the board, the yellow player plays a dark card to block the other route into the red matter pool cards. 
Green and red players move one space as normal towards the corner. Red picks up a third card and so must place one of these three cards back into the void space left by their last movement. The following turn, the blue player plays their warp card to move to the yellow matter pool cards and collects one. This doesn't count towards their two card hand limit. The yellow player moves and collects a dark card. The green player then moves onto the dark card and is delayed, flipping their player marker card to show this. The red player then plays their light card to cancel out the dark. Both cards are removed from the game. A boost is also played which takes red onto the same square as the green player. With the dark card now gone, red can collect the game card which was previously blocked. The blue player starts the next turn by playing a boost card and moves two spaces. The boost cannot be placed onto the Matapool card and so is removed from the game. The yellow player then plays a dark card onto the square in front of blue, remembering that a warp was played there previously and hindering blue's movement. Even though the dark card that delayed green has now gone, they must flip their player marker over before moving the following turn. Red moves onto the red Matapool card and takes one. You can now start to see how the game plays, the tactics you use and how memory will help you gain an advantage. The blue player could go on to use the light card they are holding to cancel out the dark in their path, then collect the warp card they left on a previous turn from underneath and move to the blue matter pool cards, gaining a second matter pool card in only a few turns. The yellow player might move to collect a yellow matter pool card, in future they themselves could take advantage of the warp card left by the blue player to move to the blue matter pool cards. The bridges held in their hand will be useful as the game progresses and more void spaces block their path. Green might move to the red matter pool before using a bridge to head back towards the green matter pool cards, whilst red could cancel out the light card in front of them with their dark before moving on towards the blue matter pool. So that's the basics. Hopefully you now have enough knowledge to go and play a competitive game. Don't forget that Voids also has solo and cooperative modes with varying degrees of difficulty. Thanks for watching and check out more info and game modes on our website at www.teleportal.com.